Florence Nightingale, also known as the Lady with the Lamp and Mother of Nursing, was born on May 2, 1820, in Florence, Italy. She broke through limitations of her time and helped shape the 19th and 20th century policies around medical care. She was the youngest of two daughters and came from a wealthy British family. Her mother was a merchant and her father was a wealthy landowner. At a young age, she was a philanthropist, helping the less fortunate people in the villages surrounding their estate. During uh, this time, taking a job was deemed as lowly menial labour by the upper classes, and Florence refused hand in marriage in 1849. Um, she did not want to resign to domestic life, as she believed God gave her the calling to nursing to reduce human suffering. Although her parents forbid her to pursue appropriate training, she later enrolled to a nursing school in 1850. Thriving in her career, she quickly became the superintendent for the governors at Harley Hospital, as she made it her mission to improve sanitary practice in Middleton Hospital amidst the cholera outbreak. Her efforts significantly reduced the hospital death rates, and in the late 1854, she organized a corps of nurses to assist British soldiers during the Crimean War. With the invitation from the Secretary of War, Sidney Herbert, um, her commitment to tend to the sick earned her the title Lady with a Lamp, as she tended to the sick every night. Her lived experience, reports and research of the war sparked healthcare reforms, establishment of the Royal Commission for the Health of the Army in 1857, and her statistics and pie charts of patient mortality due to preventable diseases in Scutari helped influence the direction of medical epidemiology. During her time, she inspired many women, she inspired many women wealthy or poor, to pursue nursing, and she was the first woman to be awarded the Order of Merit in 1907. After Scutari, she remained a figure in healthcare, and in 1860, she funded the establishment of St. Thomas Hospital. Within this, the Nightingale Training School for Nurses. She passed away on August 12, 1910, after contracting Crimean fever in Scutari, and during the years before her death, she was mostly homebound and bedridden. Although she stayed as an authority for healthcare reforms, interviewing politicians, often and sought, being sought out during um, civil wars for her knowledge on how to best manage hospital fields. Often referred to as the Angel of Crimea, up to this day she is broadly acknowledged and revered as the pioneer of modern nursing. On a basic and rough sense, a leader is someone who influences his or her followers through the exercise of power to motivate them and accomplish a goal. Uh, there are many leadership styles, but evidence suggests that transformational leaders are the most effective. Uh, transformational leaders uh, succeed due to their personal characteristics, they rally uh, morale, develop trust and loyalty, and foster creativity. These types of leaders can provide a vision and highlight the ways to attain them. Within the process, they are able to elicit and transform followers' beliefs, attitudes, and motivations, and they can create a positive positive relationship that urges followers to go above and beyond for them. What is com compassion can be defined as an internal process by which you can understand someone is in need of help. Um, understand and empathize with their situation, but not only that, you are wanting to enhance their well-being by catering to that need. Um, studies show that compassion is vital to our humanity and important attribute to become an effective leader. Compassion in studies show to mediate positive emotional attractors, which in turn activates higher cognitive functioning. It increases the openness to ideas, emotions, and people, as well as triggers positive emotional state. For leaders and their followers, this facilitates a strong collaboration and connection between people, facilitates motivation, and enhances the level of trust and loyalty by creating emotional connections. This, as a result, impacts the followers' job satisfaction, organizational commitment, effort, learning, and development. Florence uh, showed compassion in many different ways. Um, she did this um, by providing food to the less fortunate around her family estate and vowing to make a difference, assisting fallen soldiers in the Korean War, and preventing death from avoidable diseases, uh, reducing the death rate by two thirds. Um, caring for soldiers and their medical needs even throughout the night, earning her her title, um, advocating for soldiers' well-being, 
through better resources such as soap, bandages, medicine, establishing a library and classroom for intellectual stimulation and entertainment, advocating for better living quarters, um, and advocating for patients who have dietary requirements. Dedication to excellence. This can be defined as ongoing commitment to achieving outstanding results. Uh, studies suggest that dedication to excellence is an important um, attribute to possess as a leader within an organization. Dedication to excellence is the stepping stone to continuous improvement within an organization or towards a goal. And it's important in establishing a stable and thriving organization. By exhibiting this attribute, it can motivate and influence followers to make a change in their performance. Dedication to excellence is also important in creating change. Uh, Florence exhibited this attribute through finding ways to reduce mortality rates that were avoidable through production of scrubs and brushes to set up infection control protocols. Using findings during her experience in the Korean War as well to reduce further avoidable death in future conflicts and her dedication to continuous improvement by being an advocate for healthcare reforms and evidence-based knowledge or research on how to properly run civilian hospitals. Although written around 150 years ago, Florence's work can still be referenced in today's nursing practice. Her work and contribution highlighted the relationship between environmental determinants and the spread of infection in her environmental theory, therefore developing the start of infection control in contemporary nursing. Consecutively, one of her biggest achievements is being a great nursing leader and being the first woman to be awarded the Order of Merit in 1907. During the Crimean War, her first-hand experience um, experiencing the unsanitary practices, overcrowding and high infection rates allowed her to connect the mode of transmission, whether this be a direct or indirect, of the bacteriocis or virus that account for 50% of the mortality in the area. Nightingale had the theory of health of houses, which is pure air, pure water, efficient drainage, cleanliness and light. It was integral in promoting healing and general well-being of patients. Due to this, her and her nurses work hard to provide a sanitary environment, whether that be clean linen, wound dressings or clothing, and these along with nutritious food became her envir environmental theory. By March 1855, the mortality rate in the Korean War had decreased by 20%, and her theories developed over time. Although germ theory is common knowledge these days, much of this is owed to Nightingale. Um, these days, infection control is re responsible f is the responsibility of all staff, and hospital acquired infections are lessened through guidelines and policies and procedures. One of her greatest achievements was being the first woman to be awarded the Order of Merit in 1907. Um, this award is for people who provided or demonstrated eminent service in the armed forces and distinguished themselves in science, art, literature, or promotion of culture. Nightingale received this award for her contribution in the Crimean War and furthering British medicine through her work. Florence Nightingale also established nursing as a profession and established a nursing leader role in the interdisciplinary setting, such as clinical nurse specialists. During the Crimean War, she determined members of the interdisciplinary team and assigned them accordingly to set projects in motion to support patient care. She implemented change and improvements in the nursing practice and achieved outcomes and overcame barriers. As a CNS, uh, the ultimate goal is to optimize patient care and delivery, and Nightingale established this role by expanding care delivery through research utilization to translate evidence into practice and influence organization and system levels. Through this research, I have learned different qualities and attributes that make a leader effective and learned how one transformational leader has transformed the nursing profession by demonstrating these qualities. She helped the nursing profession by being a visionary and helped shape the contemporary infection control policies today. Um, her works in research and healthcare itself by effectively managing an interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary team. 
Although I already strive for excellence in my practice, this has again highlighted the importance of compassion and dedication to excellence as qualities that all nurses need to exhibit in their practice to improve patient outcomes and establish a positive working environment. I can become an effective nursing leader through effective collaboration with members of the team, fostering a positive environment through honesty and respect and demonstrating compassion in my own practice. This has also highlighted the importance for continuous improvement in nursing practice and importance of performing skills or procedures backed by evidence based. I can perform this by doing my own research on topics such as in control, infection control, um, such as importance of PPE in reducing hospital acquired transmission or infection, attending classes for CPD points and in services to improve my clinical knowledge following policies and procedures and evidence-based practice to reduce negative impacts to not just my patients, but myself and other members of the team. I can also use resources available to me, such as my clinical nurse educators or clinical nurse specialists available in the hospital to assist me in determining the best possible solution to a situation or provide me with the best possible evidence-based practice to execute procedures, which will ultimately ultimately optimize patient outcomes. This has also highlighted the importance of listening to patients and showing compassion towards their situation. I can dis demonstrate this in my practice by creating therapeutic relationships to optimize patient health through a collaborative experience and also advocating for their well-being when they may not understand the diagnosis or situation um, or when there are errors with their care plan and when they believe something may not be right as they are they know their body best 